one and all and uh, let's resume our second session though it was a short break for 5 minutes um participants we know well that how empathy and passion requires to to in, especially in the training and uh, because the question is how to train people the question is how to prepare people how to enable them and the good thing is that it's very interesting for us that today a person has come who is an enabler who is the one who is into training who is telling people that what to do and what not to do so we are having dr renu malviya and uh, it's my immense pleasure to introduce her here uh, in in such a augustus gathering and uh, ma'am we are having a wonderful you know journey of uh, learning and uh, it's our privilege that you are here and definitely we have lots of hope and we are so much eager to listen to you uh, participants uh, before i call dr renu malviya let's have a relook uh, let's know something more about dr malviya welcome ma'am uh, ma'am is associate professor can we have the first slide please ma'am is an associate professor at department of education at lady irwin college university of delhi for her doctorate she worked in the area of family school interaction from zakir hussain center of educational studies jawaharlal nehru university new delhi she earned her msc in child development from lady irwin college university of delhi and emit from himachal university she also has a diploma in the management of learning disabilities from sndp university mumbai and a certificate in professional practice aspects of learning difficulties for children and young people with disabilities from rohampton university uk her contributions are that she has also been the resource person master trainer cbsc fdrc scert ncert and schools and colleges she has also been the member of expert academic committee curriculum expert and inspector rehabilitation council of india ministry of social justice and empowerment she has also been the coordinator of bed special education department of education at lady irwin college university of delhi she has also been the secretary at all india women education fund association she has also held office at joint secretary at indian association of family therapy and she has also been a special educator and mental health professional and her publications are there are many things we have the limitation so professor malviya has authored various books including family school a psychosocial analysis of the impact on the school going child educational guidance and counseling advanced dictionary of home science to name a few and she has widely published many articles in international and national journals she has also edited a wide range of books and written various books on bibliotherapy including rays from darkness fat to fit wonderland and a fish full desire thank you ma'am for being here and giving us your valuable time uh, it's our immense pleasure uh, to have with you It's thank you so much time. dr pathak for introducing me and i don't know you managed to get so much information i don't know from where thank you so much uh and uh, yeah. good evening to all the pa uh, participants here may i share my screen now yes ma'am yes ma'am so being a teacher i always like to use udl probably so therefore uh i have my screen here and so today i have been asked to speak about intellectual disabilities and the challenges if you would have looked at the resume the introduction given it was written there bed mr so earlier it was called mental retardation now even india has accept has changed the terminology to intellectual disabilities <coughs> i mean we're talking about intellectual disabilities it is uh i mean one comes to the basic understanding that probably the intellectual levels are lesser yes maybe but the adaptive behavior is the main thing which is which is being affected by the intellectual disabilities here um so let us look at here 
that learning, and because we're talking about emerging technologies, learning, flexibility, interaction, collaboration. So when you're talking about the accessibilities, what are the factors which need to be put into this? Digital skill employment, globalization, assess sharing, inclusiveness, engagement, motivation, and enjoyment. So now when we're talking about learning, all these aspects have to be there. If I'm talking, I'll come to the characteristics, I'll come to that. But if we have classes like this, would learning be more? These are student-centric classes. These are pedagogy-related classes. So we have small groups of, uh, I mean, uh, people are sitting in small groups around tables and each of the tables, each, each group has about say four or five uh, students and each of the group has technology there, a laptop and other devices. It is in this case, generally, it is also a demonstration type of a classroom. So you have number, so the teacher sitting, standing in front or can move around everywhere. And the interaction is between the peer group also. Now, what happens in this case? So there's not one person, there are a number of people that you're learning from each other from and the technology. And each individual in that group comes with their own expertise. So a number of people together are able to learn far more than a teacher standing in front and interacting only. That is a chat teacher centric classes. So when we talk about intellectual disabilities, or we, for that matter, we talk about diversities in disabilities, diversities in human beings, we learn better when we learn from different sources. I, before I go further, when we're talking about the teachers in higher education, I also would like to emphasize on the three terms, impairment, disability, and handicap. When we talk about impairment, it is a loss of deficit or even a diversity, which is there for, at the body language when we're talking about neurodevelopmental disabilities, it is at the brain level, right? So the impairment or the diversity is there. When we're talking about, say, persons with autism, they, their brain functions in a different way. When we're talking about children, uh, persons with specific learning disabilities, their brain works different from the way our brain processes information. So remember the theories we had learned when way back, some majority, many of us have learned, is there's a way of input into the brain process, the brain works on it, and then the how we do the output. So what I, when I look at something, when I feel something, when there's an environment I enter into, what I see or feel or gain through my senses is the input. That is influenced, is processed by my brain structure. And from there, how I, what I learn from it, what I express, the way I express, the way I go out from there is the output. So that's what happens in a classroom also. You have so many people, so many different learners. What the teacher says in the classroom is when you ask the teacher, the, the students for the answers, I'm just talking at the lower level of knowledge construction. Every student would be giving answers in a different way. So input, processing, output, which is also called the, uh, the information processing theory. So now when you're talking about impairment, it is the loss or dis dis deficit or diversity. Because of that, the disability arises because certain functions cannot be performed the way the society expects them to be performed. Now, that leads to a disadvantaged position, which is at the society level. If I have to give an exam, I have to write. CBSC, universities, what have they done? They've changed the kinesthetic process of writing to you can have a scribe and you can do it verbally. 
So you don't have to write. So what has done? The handicapping situation has been removed. Now, if you remove the handicapping situation, which is caused by society, societal norms, then the disabling situations become lesser. The impairment will remain. So as professors, as teachers of universities, colleges, schools, etc., it is very important to understand if our attitudes are clear about that every individual, every human being is a creative person, is somebody who is a contributing member of society, then why that person is not able to do the complete contribution is because the handicaps which have been imposed. We need to remove those handicaps. The, the, the effect of disability will diminish. It may not go away completely. Okay, so this is the whole thing. So now I'm coming to another point. Before I go into why we are talking today, why Dr. Pathak probably has asked me to interact about intellectual disability. So before I reach there, we have to see here is exclusion is when we say that everyone, and I'm sure I don't know, please stop me, uh, Dr. Say, Pathak or um, uh, Dr. Singh, if already uh, if all this has been covered and I am again doing it because I haven't been there for the two days. Okay. So, so just let me know, give me a little hint, so I will be able to take it into, I'll just merge that, and that will save on my time also. Then I can go on to other things. Okay. If supposing I'm repeating something which has already been done. So we do not need to uh, get that repeated again. So here I am saying exclusion is when anyone who is not like us is stored directly, indirectly, by the education system, by others, you cannot be part of this. You're not even permitted to reach the institutions. That is exclusion. Segregation has come, but we'll keep you separately. Integration has come to the classroom. Come to the classroom, but manage on your own. And that is where at present, most of our equal opportunity cells are working on head on to move from integration to inclusion. We generally, the acceptance here, it is intolerance in exclusion and segregation. It is intolerance. Here there is tolerance, but not acceptance of variation. So, this is what our equal opportunity cells everywhere are trying to do is see that everyone's needs are catered to. Everyone understands, conceptualizes the strengths and the limitation imposed by society of a person. The strengths come from within. So can we highlight, can we work on those uh, abilities which are individual abilities of a person probably, yeah, and see that the best are emerging out of that. Because we need ultimately the most contributing members of society for the country and global citizenship, right? So this is what it says. Segregation is, don't come to me, I'm not for you. Integration is come, but I do not know how to change. Inclusion is, Come, you're welcome, and we will respond to your needs. So this is what we need to do. And this is what's happening in, in our schools and colleges and universities is because we are not able to understand disability or diversity, I would say, appropriately and not be able to look at the strengths, look at the abilities rather than the disabilities, we land up with lots of learners with diversities, but the teaching, learning process, the pedagogies, the type of infrastructures, what we call barriers, only permit 
the best potential of certain people to come out. So the barriers are there in the form of a wall which allows percolation of only certain characteristics, abilities, the blooming of certain abilities, strengths, uh, characteristics, etc. And from there comes in the barriers which are coming because of the assessment systems. The assistant assessment systems are again being very watertight in many ways, although we have already tried our level best to make them as permeable to differences as possible. So if you can't speak, then sign language, right? If you can't write, then scribe. So the universal design of teaching, learning in the classroom, I mean, I'm not talking about Indian sign language as of now, but see how by nature, when, a, when we're speaking, we are using some sort of sign language. And that is getting, that must have been the first basis, I suppose I'm not, got any, I, I'm not an expert in hearing impairment, but probably from there, gradually, the language, Braille as a sign language, sign, uh, sorry, Braille as a language, sign, sign language as a language would have emerged so that how do we take them into the classroom together at all times? I also want to, I'm sure you're very aware, but I also want to draw your attention back again to the traditional classroom and the flipped classroom. You know, when we're talking about the traditional classroom, we have the onus is on one person to provide all the information. So the rest of the group, the learners remain passive. But if we can change that and see that every learner constructs information, knowledge, and then we come to the classroom. So everyone is able to do it the way which is best for them. So this is turning the class topsy-turvy. What happens otherwise is I learn a theory. My teacher teaches me a theory. My teacher teaches me a formula. And then I apply it. In social sciences, we learn about certain theories. Okay, In economics, there are certain theories. Then, or in any other subject, every subject has its theories. Then we go into the larger world and we learn how we observe for ourselves and we are supported, men, uh, I mean, handholded by our teachers to help us explain, learn how they are applied into the larger world. The flipped classroom takes in where you do the research with the support of your faculty, right? So you, the assignments are given to you earlier. The YouTubes are there. The video is there. The handholding is there. The group work is there. So I have my person, my my student with ID, gets a peer group, gets a buddy, right? And is whatever are the characteristics which are different from the rest of the group are <coughs> highlighted to the buddies. In the class, the peer group is already explained, it is already, uh, they're already sensitized to the limitations or variations in the way they work. For example, if you have a person with intellectual disability <coughs> who is probably on the borderline because schools and college schools do have now children with intellectual disability who are in the mild and moderate level, not in the severe. Colleges still have just borderline individuals with intellectual disabilities, students with intellectual disabilities. Now, one of the characteristic of them is that they are not able to think in a very abstract way. So if you tell them something, hey, I don't think we are going to be there tomorrow. Now, it clearly indicates in the classroom, this is announced when the teacher is not there. What does it mean tomorrow we are monkeying? But my, in, my learner with intellectual disability will not understand this. 
okay? Nobody's going to tell the teachers about this or something like that, or is said, right? Or the, but my individual with intellectual disability is still at the, at the thinking level, which is lower than the rest of the class might have maturity level. Uh, in being able to think at the moral level is different. So this person will say, nay, this is the galat baat hai. Aisa nahi hona chahiye. It is galat. Many things are wrong. But there is a difference between the black and the white and the middle one. So this individual with intellectual disability may go over to the straw, walk over to the straw room and inform the teachers. Now, he, has, he or she has gathered so many, shall we say with the word enemies? Now, if these aspects of characteristics are known to are aware, but the he or she is a lovely individual, a lovely young adult, but doesn't know how to, what to do about these things. He or she does not have adaptive behavior abilities. So when you're changing something, today you want to do something which is different from the usual. This individual cannot change and apply the information that they had earlier to the new situation. So if the rest of the class knows this, they will be able to make good friends with him and will be able to support him, right? So yeah, but at the same, so some of the characteristics that we have, I had, let me just move a little forward and come here. So some of the characteristics that children with intellectual disability have is comprehension. The same thing has to be repeated many times and in smaller, smaller, smaller chunk to them. So like Dr. Uh, Singh was, uh, was, Riti was uh, telling, uh, it was narrating an example, or I mean, I, there are many other examples that one can narrate is supposing every day you have classes, okay? But one day is the annual day of the college. Now, the person who is intellectually, who is uh, the person with intellectual disability, just one notice is not enough. The whole process of being told that tomorrow we will not have classes from 8.30 in the morning. You have to reach college at 10 o'clock. The function is start, starting at 10 o'clock. From 8.30 to 10, nothing is going to be happening, right? Only practice will happen. So here, that information does not filter in immediately. Same would happen to what is being taught in the classroom also. So many of them, the entire, the teacher cannot stop and only cater to their needs. So many a times, the difficult concepts, and as you go up the ladder of college and university, the number of concept difficulty increases and increases and increases. So they, are, they tend to not be able to reach the level of assessment which is required. What do we do? I'm leaving you again and again with this question as I go forward. So should they not be allowed to come to college? Because the chances of failure is very high. The comprehension levels are not to the level of conceptual levels which are required. Okay, but in if more and more and more practice is done, maybe they will be able to reach and maybe they will not be able to reach that level. So are we to say that they should not, the doors of college and university should close to them? The other issue is attention. All of you have to pay attention. I know this is off, offline and it's my responsibility how well I am able to cater to this to see that you don't people doze off because now we can't see you visibly, right? I hope none of you has gone to, has uh, uh, dozed off. 
So the attention required for a college level is about 40 to 50 minutes. That's a large amount of attention required for a person. These individuals with intellectual disability have an issue with attention. Same with memory. Memory, again, you have the short-term memory, the long-term memory, the working memory, the retrieval memory, the different, I, mean, I can't go into the entire theory here. But that entire process is where they lack. Now, if you're talking about the initial working memory, when you go into the room, what all do you see? So when, what is written on the blackboard, do I pay attention to what is written on the blackboard, what the teacher is saying, or what is happening outside? The rest of them are able to focus on this, but this child doesn't know, which is more, I mean, the brain is not able to work that out. Even when the information is put in, it doesn't stay for a very long time. So it needs a lot of repetition, a lot of repetition, right? Then motivation, generalization. I've applied certain information. I knew from my last or whenever webinar, in the initial webinars, one faced that problem of, you know, uh, not knowing that your voice is audible or not. So what do we do now? My phone, my mobile is right here in front of me. I don't want to make that mistake. So that if supposing I'm not audible, somebody will tell me I'm not audible or I will after a while ask, am I audible? Okay, I'm keeping my mobile ready here as a contingency plan so that the, if supposing the organizers can't reach me via the Zoom media that we are using just now, they will phone me. What am I doing? From one mistake, I have been able to take care of it, generalize it, the same thing can happen elsewhere also. And I've made a contingency plan so that that will be taken care of. Again, in things like this, the child or the young adult or the person with intellectual disability faces problems. Language development. To be able to be communicative, you need some language. It could be a language like the language that you're talking about in the English, Sanskrit, French, German, whatever. It could be Braille language. It could be uh, sign language. It could be any other language. It could be non-verbal language. It could be anything, but you need language through which to express, which is expressive language and implicit language. language. There, again, there's a limitation. So the level of language development tends to be far lower. It's not to the level of what is expected at the college level. So see how many limitations, challenges this individual with intellectual disability goes through. And therefore, would tend to fail again and again and again without support. Do you think... I am very sure I could not have been, uh, my intellect level is not of the level. I know of people, I mean, I know some people who have an IQ of 120. They just, the knowledge level of gaining information is so fast, not mine. I take so much more time to prepare a lecture. That's my level. And if you expect me to be put into that level, do you think I'll be a success there? Should I even, after attempt, certain attempts, should I continue doing that? Or should I be do what I am good at? Is another question that I leave with you. So when we talk about essential assumptions of a person with intellectual, disability, there's a limitation in the present functioning and the context of, and with the context of community environment typical of the individual's age, peer, and culture. Valid assessment considers cultural, 
cultural and linguistic diversities, as well as difference in communication, sensory, motor, and behavioral factors. With an individual, limitation often coexists with strengths. An important purpose of describing limitation is to develop a profile of needed supports. So these are some of the limitations of a person with intellectual disabilities. So from here, let me just go back a little and talk about I, many of the things that we have put in here are also applicable for persons with SLD, persons with visual impairment, the assistive devices, but also for a person with intellectual disability. You know, this is a, a, a photostatic device which raises the photostat that comes out. So instead of using a abstract way of learning, it concretizes it, you tactile it, you can touch it. Same as here. Now look here, when I, if instead of reading, I am able to voice, the, instead of writing my answer, I'm able to voice my answer. Now, person with intellectual disability, person with visual impairment, person with uh, visual impairment and blindness, person with uh, SLD, specific learning disabilities, all gain by this. We also have devices like this, which are, we started with the DC books, and which talks about, you know, the, there are little chips in here, and which is the reading books. The audio books, which are recorded, and here, the recording chip is in this little devices here. So when you just scroll around with this, it is the it starts reading out to you. Another interesting thing about these devices is that you can put in chips of one or two or three languages. So like you have those books now, where the first paragraph is in English, then it is in Hindi, then it's in a th third language. Right? Many of the, so here, same thing is happening. So if supposing here's a child a learner with lower conceptual abilities and the first language is Hindi. So the books all are English for this particular individual. So it is put in there, the English part, then the Hindi part. It can also be, the third chip can also be in a simplification way. So the entire thing is simplified to the level of that. You would remember, and you do it also, we do, we've done it always, whether it was BSc or MSc, or of course, PhD didn't have an exam. So what did you do? Oh, that question is very tough for me. I am ready to give up those 10 marks and concentrate on the 90 marks. Okay, so those in school systems are called the hot questions. Okay, now, so here these children, persons with intellectual disability, if the content is simplified, they are able to get that much marks or score, or what are marks and scores? Marks and scores are the learning that is happening. Officially, it is supposed to be that. So that is another way. So they may not be toppers. They might be able to at least sail through the particular course. Having said, of course, universal design of learning takes all these things. I know here, again, I have taken a picture which is of a globe where the entire, it's a raised Diagram uh, globe, uh, the different continents and the different parts are raised. Same here, and this this is again used predominantly for persons with intellectual children with intellectual disabilities and blindness. But SLD gain by this, and so do the inter the person, the child, or the young adult with intellectual disability. So if I can have these things, so it's not for 
a particular, even individuals with no identified disabilities would gain when they get the same information through different senses. And this is what all the teaching learning material, which is which takes care of the different aspects senses takes care of. Let me just come to a very important point here. So we said that persons with intellectual disabilities, their main limitations are in this following three skills, conceptual skills, social skills, and practical skills. I can hear some of you, some of you saying in your brains, Bacha kya? So it is a very difficult challenge for them. But again, I'm putting the same question. So do we deprive them of college experiences? Is college experiences only a degree? I wish it was a larger, it was a face-to-face -face group and we could have had time to dialogue with each other, brainstorm. But I can almost hear some of you thinking, surely, I mean, you're thinking, aren't you? And aren't you also thinking that often when we get those degrees, are we really competent enough to get those jobs for those for which those degrees were because of those limitations and skills? So there is college is giving us many more things than only the degree. Go back, the learning that you had when you were sitting in the canteen and interacting with your peer group, the learning you had when you went for that trip, the social skills that you developed when you were organizing the event for the sports event or the annual day for event or anything, the practical tips that your colleagues and teachers gave you outside the class. And how many, if you could sit down and do an analysis of what you learned in the classroom and what you learned in college per se with and with your teachers and with your colleagues, your peer group, would you give that outside the classroom learning, a large percentage of what you learned in college and which is supporting you, facilitating you in your life in a job or further experiences in life, how you, the skills that you developed from there. So can we deprive them of those? So think college is a thing which has been coming. If you look at NEP 2020, they are also talking about the choice-based credit system, which says that let the individual learner pick up different subjects from different places. And that together is also gets divided into core subject, core uh, areas, the elective areas and the foundation areas. So, we already in our university have, uh, I mean, uh, what is, I'm forgetting the name. Uh, we have an entire center of, which is working on the cluster innovation center, which was started by our earlier uh, vice chancellor, one of our earlier vice chancellors, which also tried to do that. But Delhi University being very large, it was difficult, but gradually many universities are doing it and gradually even Delhi University will be doing, will be, has the potential to do it. Okay, so here what happens is supposing here is this individual who is good with, what do we say? Is, uh, is good with, um, uh, see, it, it makes wonderful, uh, is good with cooking, okay? Now, just being good with cooking, you don't need a college degree. But, and the person is not good enough, uh, I shouldn't say the word good enough, pardon me for that, is, not, is unable to get the hotel management degree. Although the in-person has been able to, enter the hotel management college and we, right? So 
can the person pick up certain skills from one as from from Pusa Institute, certain skills from uh, uh, Obrai Hotels for Chef, for somebody something from some other else, and together an entire certification amount of scoring or a degree amount of scoring is developed. There is another person who is very good with um, uh, what should we say in with horticulture, but is not enough good enough to get a degree, MSc degree in agricultural uh, farming or horticulture or some. Right? We have very good degrees. I am not. Or let me take the example of a person who's good at interior uh, development, but is doesn't have. Uh, is is got into an architectural college, but is not able to get a degree in architecture. Can the choice based credit system will enable these individuals to be able to collect their credits and probably get a degree or get a post graduation or a higher level certification to be able to function in those areas and be creative, contributing, job holding members of society. So Think College helps us in transition education and it provides an employment model. After all, that's one of the major objectives of the higher education system also. One is for liberal learning for the sake of learning knowledge construction for the sake of knowledge construction, but also to be able to be employable individuals in the future. So when we talk about the transition program for students with intellectual disabilities, these are already functioning programs where individuals with intellectual disabilities are able to be part of the entire system. See what all one gains from being part of the university system. Campus life, living on the residential halls, eating on the campus, typical demands of college students. Then we also gain is the courses in socialization, self-help and, in, and independence skills, individual training for em employment competence. When you are studying, it's the marks that you get, you also learn time management, you also learn the soft skills. You do not do a course on time management. While you are in university, in colleges, you're learning that. Time management is a given which aspect which is not graded, but you pick up that much better. You also learn um, social competency, you learn to prioritize, you learn how to be able to highlight what in your answers or whatever else. So here comes in the skills which come in while why persons with intellectual disability should be part of the college system, but with a variation that is there. And they also, the value of inclusion, it provides them with the value of inclusion. Here, I would like to give an example, which is dated back almost way back in the 1980s, 1981 probably. So I don't know how many years, please count them out for you, almost 40 years. That's my first exposure to a school, a special school, then you didn't, nobody spoke about inclusion, uh, of a special school where as a part of my training, we were supposed to visit. So I went there and I reached much earlier than anyone else had reached. And I was feeling so uncomfortable mentally that here were all these individuals, all these learners, it was a vocational training college, and there were all these learners and all of them were had intellectual disability, mental retardation. I'd also seen a lot of movies where they, you know how they are projected 
intellectual persons with intellectual disability. So you can hear, understand my discomfort, my fear, my everything. None of the teachers had arrived. Guess what? I'm sitting there very uncomfortable, trying not to show all of 21, 22, 23 years that I was. These three, four girls come to me and they ask me, Tumara naam kya hai? Tum kya kar rahi ho? Tumara sukurta to bahut achcha lag raha hai. And they went on. What would they do? They were the ones who were able to had better interpersonal skills than I had. This was my realization for the first time. And that was my first experience in why it is important that persons with any diversity, disability needs to be in the open place. Everyone is, should have visibility on the college campus. When we see, we learn from each other. So inclusion is a thing which is a moving target and it's possible only when we know and we interact with people and we are able to use, see them. And so we learn the strengths and their limitations. So I need to, what are the, when you have a person with intellectual disability on your campus, it is not me like for other students, it's not for me to decide what that person should become. It is let the person be able to come to realistic goals. Like we help our students, other students, to come to realistic goals. And then intensify the support needs. Make the awareness of teachers and the peer group. So every time there's an individual with intellectual disability, the peer group needs to be sensitized that these are going to be the limitation. Every time the timetable gets changed, this person with intellectual disability will lose their class because they just know one thing. They know they have to go to this particular class and for first period. Now the first period class has been shifted to the second floor. It's in the timetable. It was announced in the class. Yet, this particular child with intellectual disability will not be able to find a contingency plan. When they go to the class in the first period and they see there's nobody there, they get lost. They're lost. They will just go and sit down, go back, do something. They will not try to think what if classes are happening everywhere, why is my class only not happening? They will not think that I must ask that girl in the class or that boy in the class who is friendly with me and friendly in a positive sense and for their telephone, mobile number. So next time when I lose my class, I know where to find out. I the, he, so and so wouldn't understand that there is a WhatsApp group of the class and everything is posted on the WhatsApp group. So I better look up that WhatsApp, WhatsApp group and find out what is happening. Okay? So the message is there on the WhatsApp group also, but the person is not able to think in those directions, which we would do, be able to do that. So here comes in, again, when I, other thing that would may happen is that when the teacher is teaching in the classroom, the teacher is teaching in a has is teaching in a particular way. This individual is not able to tell the teacher, "Mujhe samajh nahi aa hai," or is he not able to comprehend clearly? And because not able to comprehend clearly, is not able to ask questions, and is not able to ask questions in a socially approved manner. So you all literally have to feed in and EOCs have a tough time in trying to help them frame questions which they can ask in a socially approved manner. So these are, I think I'm overshooting my time here. 
So if my classrooms are something like this, where there are, you know, these are learner-centered classrooms where, you know, this, the teacher can roam about. So in this second one I'm showing is that there are two benches together and so you, and there can be about four people sitting around there and the teacher can go around and they are discussing among themselves the project the entire process of teaching has been made in such a way that the students will do the initial brainstorming getting information and the teacher will take it forward from there so there is peer ha support happening. We also now have what is called the universal design of learning guideline, and which talks about how do we represent information in the classroom has to be in so many different ways. So I have basically there are three different ways which are further divided into many. The three different ways are provide options for perception. So you have the senses. So you're not teaching in the classroom through only one sense. So it's not only oral. It has to be oral. It has to be, um, uh, uh, I mean, a visual. It has to be kinesthetic. It has to have technology from speech to text and so on and so forth. And then it has to be expressions expressed in as different ways and engaging the students in as different. So my, the, I leave you with the thought here that should intellectual children or learners or college students with intellectual disabilities be, have the same syllabus as everyone, can we have, have them, give them the experience of college and also have a different combination for them as, so that what is called Think College. And how do we as teachers coordinate with our EOC to learn more about the limitations or the challenges that children with, with learners with intellectual disability face on the campus? Thank you. I can see Dr. Pathak. No, not at all, ma'am. Um, it's wonderful. I mean, I'm lost into it. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I've overshooted five minutes. No, not at all. No. We have time. Uh, so any questions that you would be wanting to ask or? Yeah, definitely, ma'am. Um, Are they in the chat box? Yeah, it's there in the chat box and lots of questions and appreciation is there. So I'm taking these questions and... Uh, I cannot see my chat box. But how come? Uh, uh, the chat box has to be anyway. Please ask me. I'm yeah, looking yeah. at it in um, the meantime. Um, this question huh. is from uh, Kanchan. Uh, yes. Kanchan, and do students who are slow learners and autism come under the category of intellectual disability? How do okay. you handle them? Huh. Uh, see, there are again, uh, because of lack of time, or maybe I missed out, uh, we have what is called autism spectrum disorder. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a whole spectrum of persons with autism. You will, this is an interesting thing about autism spectrum disorder, the whole gambit of it. The person with, uh, might have IQ, which is average or below average. You might have a person who is called an Asperger's. My name is Khan, is the, uh, is the yeah. movie that you need to see for this is where the intellectual ability uh, in uh, your IQ levels are genius level, which is 120. Yours and my IQ is 90, 100. That's our IQ, right? Their IQ is 120, 140. But you might also have a, individual, a, a person with autism whose IQ is uh, below average. So it might be 75, it might be 70, it might be 80, 80. Etc. is somewhere in the borderline. So depending, so you have autism, that becomes even a difficult, a more challenging for us as teachers because they will have the characteristics of autism and they will have the characteristics of intellectual disability also. The characteristics of autism is in a nutshell, because we don't have too much of time, sure, sure, no. uh, in a nutshell is they behave like a computer. 
If I have put Dr. Savita Patak's name in my mobile as S E instead of S A, I can keep typing S A on my mobile. Savita, the, the, the word Savita will not come out. That is one of the major things. They think straight jackets. So that is another added issue that we have when we have persons with autism who are also intellectually, uh, who have intellectual disability. Have I been able to answer that question? Yeah, yeah, sure, ma'am. And it's huh? so long, you know, I mean, you have yeah. opened actually a new spectrum to understand various things. Now I'm picking another question. This is from Sonam Zanko. And he wants to know UGC is doing excellent to train university, college, etc. teachers. But what about those teachers who are engaged in teaching in higher secondary, middle or primary schools? Uh, from the foundation in the all aspects of education start, it's not essential to train them first and foremost. I mean, it is not essential to, I still can't locate the question. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, uh, the last question, the last part sentence, Last part is, it's not essential to train them first and foremost? Uh, the teachers. Teachers, oh. yeah, primary teachers. You know, you wouldn't know because I am a teacher. I'm a, I train, I'm in the BA department, right? So I am also a master trainer uh, for almost three decades now. CBSC is working very hard throughout the COVID. They have engaged people my, like me and before the COVID also. You know, like you have your in-service, we have these in-service programs. The school teachers also have similar in-service programs. And let me tell you that because I am exposed to the school system and to the college system, the understanding of the general teachers in schools as compared do in colleges is far more because CBSC and other boards are doing a constant training and handholding in the school system. But remember, it's a large country and remember attitudes are very difficult to change. It takes 20 years to be an overnight success. It's not, you know, it's like when we have an exam, we give the answer and we get 100%, we get 90% out of, we are toppers. But when it comes to application of that knowledge in our jobs, we are not able to do it. Same issues there. Attitudes are very difficult to change. It takes generations. So CB, no, the school system is working. On it. working. I vouch yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, it will, yeah. please. Yeah, ma'am, Dusra Sawal. Even Aganwari's, ICDS is also working on it. Okay. Hmm. दूसरा मतलब सभी हमें तो वो कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऐसे एक कैरेक्टर्स है ना उस उस वातावरण की वजह से ना उस समय की वजह से है ना आपने उसको एक क्लासिफाई कर दिया हमें अगर यूनिवर्सिटी में कोई भी हमारा स्टूडेंट आ रहा है उसको एक एसेसमेंट कंप्लीट करके लेके आना पड़ता है पूरा प्रोसेस है हर हर पार्ट ऑफ द कंट्री में कहाँ से आपका एसेसमेंट रिपोर्ट बननी है वहां पर पूरी स्पेशलाइजेशन uh, टीम बैठी बेट, हुई है राइट right? वो उसको करते हैं और कमियां तो होंगी ना इतना बड़ा देश है इतना बड़ा देश है पर जो भी हमारे पास बच्चे हमारे कॉलेजेस में आते हैं उनका एसेसमेंट हुआ हुआ है उनके पास रिपोर्ट्स हैं बहुत से अन भी चले जाते हैं ये बात मैं आपकी पूरी एग्री करती हूँ इस बात पे ये भी बहुत कमियां हैं कि हमारे पास इनफ क्लिनिकल साइकोलॉजिस्ट नहीं है हमारे पास हमारे पास इनफ स्पेशल एजुकेटर्स नहीं है हमारे पास अभी पीपल जो कि हमारे स्पेशल एजुकेशन में वर्क कर रहे हैं इन द यूनिवर्सिटी सिस्टम जो कि ईओसी से कनेक्टेड है वो कहीं पर आ, अपने एक आई मीन I mean, उनके पास स्पेशलाइजेशन भी हैं अनुभव भी है और एक बहुत ड्राइव है 
उसकी वजह से कर रहे हैं पर ओवरलोडेड भी हैं तो इसलिए ये कमियां तो दिखाई देंगी ही तो बट धीरे धीरे ये अब आपने आप पता है स्कूल में हर स्कूल में आपको एक स्पेशल एजुकेटर एक काउंसलर साइकोलॉजिस्ट होना जरूरी है जी नहीं अब कॉलेजेस में भी ये मूव हो रहा है कि पर्सन विद स्पेशल एजुकेशन जिसने स्पेशल एजुकेशन किया है उसको हर कॉलेज कॉलेज में भी होना चाहिए अलोंग विद द पीपल हु हैव रियली रियली स्पेंड देयर लाइफ वर्किंग फॉर ट्राइंग टू हैव इंक्लूशन तो ये काम हो तो रहा है और यानी कि 2020 ने क्या कहा है कि आपके पास जो आपका टीचिंग प्रोसेस होना चाहिए वो स्टूडेंट सेंट्रिक और स्टूडेंट सेंटर्ड होना चाहिए टीचर सेंट्रिक नहीं होना है तो वो उसके लिए भी स्किल्स टीचर्स में डेवलप करने के लिए एन 2020 ने कहा है कि टीचर्स के लिए रिसोर्स और इन सर्विस ट्रेनिंग के लिए फंडिंग अलग से होनी चाहिए तो ये सब चीजें हो रही हैं है। क्या मैं आंसर कर पाई जी जी जरूर मैम बहुत बहुत सारी चीजें पता चल रही नाउ आई एम टेकिंग नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम रुदला जोशी जी एंड हर क्वेश्चन इज हाउ द इंटेलेक्चुअली डिसेबल्ड पर्सन वुड कवर द थियरी सब्जेक्ट और सम की कॉन्सेप्ट This is the question which I have already yeah. Yeah. Ji, um, left everyone to reflect upon. क्या वो उसका जब मैंने कॉन्सेप्शल क्लैरिटी कॉन्सेप्शल लेवल्स मैंने उदाहरण अपने को ही उसमें रखते हुए कहा जो कि मैं इंटेलेक्चुअल डिसेबल तो नहीं नहीं हूँ एटलीस्ट आइडेंटिफाइड तो नहीं हूँ पर मैं अगर वहां यहाँ तक आई हूँ तो चांसेस है कि नहीं हूँ है ना तो ऐसे तो पीएचडी व्हाट आई एम सेइंग इज तो जो पर्सन विद इंटेलेक्चुअल डिसेबिलिटी है उसकी कंसेप्चुअल लिमिटेशंस हैं पर इसलिए वो एक लेवल तक जा सकता है या जा सकती है ये एक क्वेश्चन है एक्सेप्टेड फैक्ट है दूसरा क्वेश्चन है जो मैं रिफ्लेक्ट करवाना चाहती हूँ कि क्या उनको इसलिए कॉलेजेस में एंट्री नहीं होनी चाहिए ये उदाहरण आपको आप अगर डिफरेंट इक्वल अपॉर्चुनिटी सेल्स के जो हमारे अपने कोलीग्स हैं हमारे से, से, से लोग हैं उनसे आप पूछिए एक साल नहीं पास हो पाते दो साल नहीं पास होते तीन साल नहीं पास होते क्या वो खाली इसलिए भी है कि हमारी टीचर्स सेंसिटाइज नहीं है या हमारी टीचर्स इतनी सेंसिटाइज नहीं है और या या एंटायर एजुकेशन सिस्टम सेंसिटाइज नहीं है प्लस उनका पोटेंशियल उस सब्जेक्ट में उतना ही है तो ये क्वेश्चंस हैं जिसके ऊपर हमें बहुत स्ट्रॉन्गली डिबेट करना है जी जी अगर जिसमें जिस एरिया में मेरी इंटरेस्ट नहीं है आई एम नॉट अ गुड सिंगर आई कॉन्ट इवन सिंग इन द बाथरूम Had my parents insisted, nay, you have to be a Lata Mangeshkar. I could have spent my entire life trying to do that. I would not have succeeded. I moved gradually into the areas where I have strengths. So may I leave this question open-ended for everyone to debate on? Yes, 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 ma'am. uh now i'm taking another question from dr vishma kobragade mm-hmm. and uh, this question mm-hmm. is embedded in a kind of suggestion also mm-hmm. so why do not keep syllabus different for intellectually disabled students stakeholders should be trained exactly that's what we are saying choice based based what is it called credit system so let's why only we open it not only for them for others also and that's what the school system is also doing you know there are two terms when we are talking about the school system is is far ahead of the college system or the university system in this sense adaptation of how the knowledge is constructed how we the education system helps in construction of knowledge for our learners so there are two things either you change the way in which you are explaining something which is called i'm just just main khali upar up keh rahi hu ye puri isme to 2 ghante lag jayenge nahi to 
उसको कहते हैं हम एकोमोडेशन हम उसका कॉन्सेप्चुअल लेवल उसका लेवल ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग उसका लेवल ऑफ उसकी हैवीनेस ऑफ दैट थ्योरी और वट एवर वी आर टीचिंग उसको कम नहीं कर रहे हैं पर हम उसको दूसरी तरीके से सिखा रहे हैं अभी मैंने क्या किया इंग्लिश में बोलते बोलते हिंदी में चली गई ना नॉर्थ इंडिया में हूँ मुझे पता है मैं हिंदी में बोलूंगी तो हो सकता है बहुत सारे लोगों को ज्यादा मतलब हम सब हमारी भाषा हिंदी के से मिली हुई है है ना अभी यही चीज मैं कहीं साउथ इंडिया में करती तो नहीं होता मैं हिंदी में बोलती नहीं वहां पर है नहीं सो दिस इज कॉल्ड ए कॉम्पिटिशन उसका लेवल कम नहीं कर रहे जो मैम मैडम कह रही है अभी उसमें क्या कह रहे हैं हम उसको मोडिफाई कर दो उसका लेवल लोअर कर दो तो स्कूल सिस्टम्स में तो अब ये भी करने लगे हैं द स्टूडेंट हैज बीन लर्निंग इन ग्रेड एट इट डज नॉट से दे हैव पास्ट ग्रेड एट ओके सो नाउ दैट्स द सर्टिफिकेट दैट मेनी स्कूल्स गिव नाउ so one thing is this or you have a combination of the examples that i had given so you choose from here there and everywhere and complete your credits have i answered yeah, the yeah, question sure, yeah. sure. it was great and i'm getting lots of appreciation from people um, i mean where in people are expressing that you have nicely explained and it was it is really very soothing and in warming sort of thing ma'am that you know intellectual disability is such a thing which is less addressed and uh, i mean you have open a uh, new venue um now i request our may i just uh, may i just add one would just sure, sure. coming in you know in intellectual disability we have the last part which is like we are average intelligence and the other is the intellectual disability per se mm -hmm. in between we have a little person which is the borderline intellectual disability now these people are not addressed and these are the ones who are the ones who are coming to college they do not come under b i mean they are not given space in disability they are not given space in the so called non disabled normal people Uh, spaces. These are the children who are coming to the colleges as of now. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. It, it is wonderful, and I mean, there is time constant. Otherwise, you know, this is such a thing which Absolutely. we want to listen more and more. Now, I would like to request our coordinator, Dr. Smriti Singh, and uh, she would be uh, giving you official, you know, uh, thanks. And I request Dr. Smriti Singh. Ma'am, it's over to you. Yeah. <clears throat> Again, uh, thank you so much, ma'am. You have been in our advisory body also. Thank you so much for everything. Like the the lecture was, of course, it is wonderful. We always keep on listening to you, and always it is beneficial. Always it is new. You know, something thank new to learn and new to listen. So thank you so much for wonderful session which you have taken and the way you have addressed. college uh, uh, teachers problem and the students who are coming to me uh, coming to us what kind of problem they face and what is our challenges it was remarkable thank you so much ma'am it's my pleasure thank you so much dr smriti for giving uh, for giving me the spaces thank you it's thank always you, lovely you. to be with you uh, ma'am uh, one minute leave no, now yeah no, yes, ma'am ma you just, have to be there just for a minute, for uh, a minute. yeah i request our technical coordinator to please put on video so that we can take a group photograph with dr renu malviya ma'am yes ma'am uh, participants have been given thank you nupur so Party please switch on your camera it has been taken upar swasti yes ma'am ha thank you so much uh i think for today everybody must be in rush because you have holi and tomorrow day after tomorrow uh tomorrow is sunday and day after tomorrow is ho holi so you will not have any session as you can see in the schedule but still i am repeating it tomorrow on sunday and monday because due to holi we do not have any session 
we would be meeting on tuesday 30th of march at uh, like 2 30 or so we start joining right at three o'clock we'll start with our session it would be all about sign language and it would be very interesting so i expect everybody to join and i expect for everyone safe and happy holy all the best to everyone i think uh, i think nobody has to say anything today right everybody must be in rush yes